Our topic for today is guiding. Because unless you have an encoder, your mount is not good enough, not accurate enough to do the job alone. What options we have to guide, what do we have to take care of, all of that right after the trailer. Welcome to part 8 of the Basecamp training. And we arrived at guiding. So what is guiding? Your mount, when it is polar aligned, will actually quite accurately follow the sky. The problem is, it only follows it quite accurately. But when you do 3 or 5 minute exposures, quite is not good enough. So we need something else which tells the mount when it's not accurate. And that's guiding. So what guiding does is that you tell your computer to focus on one star. And as soon as the star is not exactly where it was before, the computer tells the mount, move a little bit to the left or to the right or up or down, so that the star is again where it was before. So what that needs is that the computer shoots a photo, which only has to be about a second long, and then checks where the star is, does the correction, shoots the next photo, makes the correction if necessary, and so on. But the problem is that with the real camera, we're shooting three or five minute exposures. And you cannot at the same time shoot a three minute exposure and a one second exposure. We hope at one point technologically that will be feasible, but until now it's not. And so what we need is a guide cam. Guide cams are rather small, uncooled cameras, and actually it's better if you take a mono camera than a color one, because you have the high resolution, and high resolution is key when you do guiding. But now you have actually to connect this camera to something. And here you have two options. The traditional option is something like this. A small telescope, here Nomigon 60 mm And so you install this guide scope at your telescope. Camera goes in the back as with the real telescope. And you ensure that the guide scope points exactly at the same point where the real telescope points to. Issue done. So you have your own guiding system with its own guide cam and guide scope. And the question you might have is what guide scope do I need? What guide cam do I need? And this really depends on the telescope that you have chosen and how you figure out which are the ideal guide cam and guide scope. We will look a little bit later. Now, the other option that you have is an off axis guider. Looks strange. What do you actually do? You install this off axis guider between the telescope and the filter wheel camera. So what does it do? At the bottom here comes the guide cam. And now you see here a little mirror. So what happens? From the telescope, the light beam comes. The area that's needed for your camera goes through here. But this mirror takes also a little peek on what's going on on your telescope. So that a few stars are actually visible. And this goes then to the guide cam. So with this you do not need a guide scope. So what speaks for a guide scope? What speaks for an off-axis guider? For the guide scope speaks that it's easier. You just screw the scope and the camera on top of your telescope. Ensure that it points the same direction. Make sure that it's in focus. Everything's done. Everything's fine. That's straightforward. Everybody can do that. The issue is that to make it work, your guide scope should be around at least a quarter of the focal length of your telescope. So with a 400 millimeter focal length, that's kind of easy. 100 millimeter focal length on your guide scope and you're okay. 
and you can even go a little bit higher and everything will be fine. But what if you have a 2000 millimeter focal length on your telescope? That would already be a 500 millimeter refractor. Now it gets more difficult. And there are other issues when you actually shoot with high focal length with a guide scope where it does not really get reliable anymore. So a rule of thumb is, if you have an over 1000 millimeter focal length telescope, you rather go with an off-axis guider than with a guide scope. So what's the problem with an off-axis guider, you ask? Well, it's not that easy. On one side, you have to make sure that this little prism, this mirror, does not block your camera. Otherwise, you have a shadow in there. Then sometimes it gets difficult because you have filters. So while with a default filter, your guide cam will be in focus. If you change the filters and the focus changes, then suddenly the guide cam is not in focus anymore. And stuff like that. Also with higher focal lengths, like if you go 2000 mm for example, it might be hard for the guide scope to still find a star at all. With this high magnification and this little piece, sometimes you will have to move actually this off-axis guider around to find the star. So if you follow my recommendation and you go with a lower focal length refractor, then I would definitely recommend that you start with a guide scope and not with an off-axis guider. But there is actually a third option and that's the SIVO ASI 2600 MC Duo. And this camera has already two sensors included. The real sensor for making the photos and the small sensor for the guiding. And so you do not need an off-axis guider, everything is in focus. So that's quite an ingenious invention. And this is at the moment exclusively offered by SIVO. I can absolutely recommend this solution for the MC version, so for the color version. I would not recommend it for the mono version, given that it doesn't work with some filters, because there the guide cam sensor is also behind the filter. And if you work in the mono side with very narrow, narrow band filters, like three nanometers, for example, it just doesn't let enough light through it that the stars still could be visible at this small exposure. And by the way, from a software point of view, the ASI Air has already a guiding solution included. And if you go with a mini PC, then there is only one solution which everybody uses and that's PHD. And funny enough, PHD stands for press here dummy. And the name is very fitting because you practically only have to push a button and PHD does everything for you. And the great part is it's actually free. Now if you have found the perfect guiding solution, you installed everything and you shoot and you do not have a good guiding, there's a few reasons for that. One, balancing. If everything that's on your mount is not balanced the right way, then this will lead to bad guiding. If your mount is not correctly polar aligned, it will lead to bad guiding. Vibration and wind can lead to bad guiding. If you put more weight, more load on your mount than what it's made for, or you go all the way to the top, to the max, that can lead to bad guiding too. If your guide scope is not in focus, or also your camera is not in focus with your faxis guider, that can lead to bad guiding. And last but not least, sometimes you have very specific settings you should enter in PHD for the mount that you're buying. Please read carefully through the manual and see if such instructions are given. If yes, please enter these specifications in PHD. Otherwise, it might not guide the best as it could. So we will now go to my computer. But before we go there, shopping again, I will actually show you a tool where you can figure out if the guide cam and the guide scope that you have selected are actually the right choice for the scope that you have in mind. Welcome on my computer. As promised, before we go to look at the equipment, 
here is this tool that I talked about. You find it again under astronomy tools and the name is guide scope suitability. So what are we doing here? Here we first enter our scope. As a first example, let's take again the ASCAR FRA 400. Here we have it. So 400 millimeter focal length. We do not use a reducer as a camera. Let's say we use a ASI 533, pixel size is 3.76. And so that's now our imaging system. Now let's go to the guide camera. If you would go with the off-axis guide, you would simply enter here with the telescope, the same telescope as up here. But we're at the moment looking at guide scopes. Let's take here the SIBO 30 millimeter mini guide scope that has a focal length of 120 millimeters. Remember what we said, minimum a quarter, that's given here. And as a camera, let's also take a SIBO, the 120 mono, is a very small one, also rather cheap. So let's try it with this one. Okay, and what do we have here? The imaging guiding ratio is a 1 to 3.32, and that's great. What we need is here a number below 5. So we can go up to 1 to 5, but not higher. And to demonstrate that here with the focal length, as I've shown you, if you go now down to a focal length of, let's say, it's a little bit unrealistic, but anyway, let's say to 70. And now you see what happens, 1 to 5.7. So now we're too high. But to illustrate now, let's change the telescope to a Celestron C11 with a 2800 millimeter focal length. We leave at the moment the camera. And now you see with our cute guiding scope, which some people might actually, you know, believe that this is sufficient and by it, we're at a 1 to 28 ratio. So this is not going to work at all. And remember the Orion Guidescope 60 that I've shown you and that I actually used on my Celestron CPC 800. So that's this configuration that I actually used. Let's look at the number. 1.84. So that was also a beginner mistake from myself. And then I was wondering why I didn't got great guiding um, results. I blamed it on the wedge, I blamed it on this and that, but actually it was just my guide scope was absolutely not sufficient for the focal length of the telescope. And anyway, as we learned for these focal lengths we anyway should use off-axis guiding. So play around with this tool before you actually buy a guide scope and a guide cam, just to be sure that it actually fits together. Let's go now on the Gina Astro and look around a little bit what we actually have when it comes to guiding. What we have looked at before is actually this guide scope here from SIVO. It's really quite a cutie, it's really small, but for a focal length, as we have seen, of 400 millimeter, 500 millimeter, this does the job. And it works nicely together with guide cams like the ASI 120mm. And you can see, and I think we discussed that on the computer side, you can actually, if you go to SIVO track, if you go with an ASI Air, you can buy the whole thing as a package, the ASI Air, the guide scope and the guide cam. And if that's the way you want to go, then this is actually a great package here. Again, given your telescope that you want to buy is within the 400 to probably around max maximum 600 millimeter range. Otherwise you have to go with a larger guide scope. And you see also William Optics has these small, neat guide scopes, even in various colors. And if you want to go with something a little bit more serious, we have here from William Optics, but also from Achina, their own brand, or also here from Skywatcher, we have 50 millimeter scopes. So here we have one from William Optics, 50 millimeters, so that's 200 millimeter focal length. So that brings you up to 800 millimeter focal length of your real scope. If you go beyond that, I would anyway recommend off-axis guiding 
And when we talk about off-axis guiding, you see here the off-axis guiders that are offered. If you use off-axis guiding with a Celestron, Schmidt Cassegrain, they actually have their own off-axis guider, which can be recommended in these cases as they have very large prisms because they have such a high focal length so that there's a high probability that some stars are actually visible. Also, SIVO offers off-axis guiders. Again, if you go with a SIVO cam, if you go with a SIVO filter wheel, usually it's an optimal choice to then also choose a SIVO off-axis guider, then everything fits nicely together. And that applies whatever camera brand that you're actually choosing to check if they also have a filter wheel, if they also have an off-axis guider and buy all of that from the same manufacturer makes a lot of sense, then it fits nicely together and you use the least amount of your optical path. And that brings us here to our third solution as I showed you, the SIVO ASI 2600 MC Duo. If you do not have a camera yet, if the 2600 is in your price range and if you want to go with one shot color and not with mono, then that is definitely the perfect way for guiding. Given that you have the advantage of the off-axis guiding without all the hassles that real off-axis guider actually brings. And with that, we're at the end of our shopping trip today. And with that, we're through with the essential parts that you need for astrophotography. Next time, we will look at the little nitty gritties that you also need but the big parts we have actually covered now. And given there's already so much we have covered, I just want to remind you again that on my Patreon page, you can get a full PDF where everything we have covered until now, you can find in written. See you next time and until then, clear skies.